Yes, yes. Still colours back in the building. What's everyone saying? I know it's been a while. Hope everyone's well. Hope everyone's good. Hope everyone is blessed. It's me and Kay here. Back again. I know you ain't seen our faces for a long time, but we're back. Um, and, you know, we're back bringing to you another episode of If We Had To Pick. Um, this is, I think, episode five now. Um, and yeah, man, this is this 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 one is very very special. I know I've said that a couple of times since you've been doing this, but for real, this one's really really special because we're gonna be um, talking about two very prominent UK artists um, who delivered essentially two of the finest UK albums in history. What genre? you want to um, wanna listen to, whether that's rock, whether that's hip-hop, whether that's, you know, folk, um, country, wherever it is, these two albums are definitely two of the greatest UK albums of all time. Um, so today, ep episode five of If We Had To Pick, we're going to be sort of talking about Craig David's Born To Do It, his debut album, Born To Do It, um, versus Dizzy Rascal's debut album, Boy In The Corner. Um, man, Obviously, these two albums were three years apart from 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 each other. I think obviously, Born to Do it got released in in two thousand, and then uh, um, Dizzy's Boy in the Corner got released in two thousand and three. Um, but their impact, even though they were released over twenty years ago, their impact can be felt today. Um, so before we get into into all the all the shebangs, okay, like what did these two albums mean to you on a personal level? Um. Uh, quite a lot, but I think one more, more, one more than the other, and that's because of you know, Born to Do It was such like a massive international hit. Also, not just in America, but in Europe, more importantly, and especially in Sweden. I remember when I was young, and my brother literally had the album, and I, and he would like listen to it, and I also would listen to it as well. So, mm -hmm. and that was like in two thousands when the album came out, and I can literally remember the iconic album cover as well. So. This album has um, stayed with me uh, throughout the years, man, and um, mm. its esteem has sort of like gone higher. There's been moments where I'm like, didn't like certain records, but um, overall, uh, the esteem of the album has increased. While with um, Boy in the Corner, I only got into it much later, like when I was a much uh, older adult around this age period and now, and that's because mm. The grime scene was very much a like uh, domestic scene. It obviously it wasn't as global, of course, like yeah. what you know R and B R and B was. Um, so yeah. yeah, but over the years, boy in the corner, fam, like you you will see more as we have this conversation of why yeah. I fucking break the album. But what about you? You grew up mostly in the UK, and yes. and yeah. I think you're a year or two older than me, so you probably was much yeah. more cognizant of especially what um craig david's album born to do it was doing and also uh boy in the corner was doing in the scene facts facts you know like yeah I, I i grew up in the uk um so i definitely felt the impact of both of these albums um yeah. i mean craig david's born to do it that was all over the radio <laughs> yeah when people used to listen to the radio like that was just seven days walking away you couldn't you couldn't escape you know hearing those tunes um yeah. and on the tv as well like um you, you couldn't just even if you tried you couldn't you know not hear seven days walk away um fill me in like you know it was just all around our screens and and also way in the corner um it wasn't so much on our screens and you know on radio as much as born to do it was because born to do it was a lot more commercial yeah 100 yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot more, yeah, co commercially acceptable than, yeah. than uh, uh, Boy in the Corner was. But obviously at that time, the grime scene was just bubbling. Like, yeah. you know, it was, it was literally bubbling. And um, I was really into, like, obviously grime, hip-hop, um, and all that underground stuff back in the day. Obviously, um, also, not Funky House, but uh, what's it called? Um, garage. Uh, garage, yeah. Garage, garage, yeah. garage, garage. So... Yeah, the underground scene was popping back in the day. And, yeah, um, yeah. yeah, my cousin used to always, like, always have, like, you know, like, all the underground UK mixtapes in it. Um, 
and um, he always used to play it. So I got into it because of because of that. So yeah, one boy in the corner came out, man. And obviously, fix up Luke Sharp. That was the big commercial hit. For me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just I just saw the thing for it uh, not long ago. I think that went top twenty or top yeah, 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 fifteen was, during that period of time. Yeah, so it was yeah, a huge thing. And obviously, like Dizzy, Dizzy again, he wasn't as commercially successful um, and commercially sort of um, out there as 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 Craig was, but his 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 tape was still popping on the underground scene, especially. You know? yeah. So I definitely felt both of the impacts in in two different ways. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Um, and yeah, like like I said, these these two albums coincidentally were both the debut albums of of of, of Craig and and Dizzy. Um, and I mean, what 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 a way to introduce yourself. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, hundred um, percent. Yeah, yeah. What a way to introduce yourself. And um, yeah, like I said before, these two albums have, have stood the test of time. So, yeah, obviously, you know, I know that these two albums are sort of different. Obviously, um, Born to Do It is predominantly R and B, and obviously, Rascal's Boy in the Corner is Gram. Yeah. But okay, like, could you just let the people know why you are deciding to put these two albums against each mm -hmm. other, even though they are different? Yeah, like even what you said, like even though they are completely different albums, uh, what makes the reason why we're comparing these two albums is, is that they're very much similar uh, in terms of their execution. So both albums really much borrow uh, on the you know, on the UK urban scene at that particular point of time. Obviously, Dizzy Rascal with Grime, and then Greg David with Two Step and Garage, and obviously Two Step. Uh, sorry, Grime was originated from Two Step, or mostly drum and bass as well. So loads of that dance scene. Um, mm -hmm quite uh, you know sort of similar with uh uh craig david's uh but although they do sound completely different but also more importantly um there's only few british album that have that are made by urban artists and not big boy sort of artists um that have still stood the test of time because of it because of their qualities and um, these two are up there like every time someone has a conversation of like you know which is the greatest uh, albums uh, in the UK, uh, these two always come up, and also another album, um, another album. Uh, obviously, the streets, uh, streets first two albums, but that's that that is going to be talked about at some other point in the series as well, and some other you know albums would like to have those sort of you know UK influence as well. But um, that's the reason why we are comparing these two albums. So, yeah, yeah. If you've watched this series already, then you obviously you know the four main categories that we're, we're going to speak about. For those that haven't watched this series before, we we, we sort of, you know, um, speak about four main categories um, when we're comparing two albums that we put up against each other. So the first category that we sort of talk about is the buzz. And then we go on to the sonics. And then we go on to the, the replay value. And then we, we finish with the cultural impact. Um, so yeah, um, let's just get straight into it as per usual. So okay, like just in terms of the buzz, bro. Like obviously, I know that you know at this at this moment in time when both of these albums came out, you wasn't currently in the UK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. UK. I think you were somewhere else. I think you were in Sweden or something. Yeah, yeah, I was in Sweden. I was a little boy yeah, in Sweden. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just a baby boy in Sweden. Yeah, just a baby boy in Sweden. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so obviously, your 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 sort of your sort of take on this might be a bit different, but yeah. just in terms of the buzz, I know you touched on it before, but just in terms of like the buzz, at the time when you were in Sweden, who do you feel like had the bigger buzz? I, I can't lie, it has to be Craig David. And there's no slant to um, Easy mm -hmm. Rascal's debut album. And it's because of, the, you know, the R&B and also, Dance music in the 90s and the 2000s was so big, man. Like, we had even Jennifer Lopez, like, would that, would that bring in home tonight? Oh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know yeah. if that's the lyrics correct. Waiting for tonight. Waiting for tonight. Yeah, yeah. Waiting for tonight. Obviously, we had Madonna years ago releasing mm. her sort of electronic dance music album. So this, dance music was ruling very much the charts. We had Robin as well, I think. We had Robin. Yeah, we had Robin as well. Yeah, Robin as well. Um, mm. But... Obviously, uh, with the R&B sensibility and those things mixed together, uh, Craig David's album just went up the chart. And I just remember when I was young, my brother continuously playing the album and me obviously loving some of the records like Feel Me and Seven Days. Also, those are some of the singles and also the iconic videos, man, like the videos, especially the Seven Days video, absolutely iconic stuff, man. So. 
I will give the buzz uh, to, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, Craig David. But with Boy in the Corner, the only time I got to experience that album was through uh, the play, uh, what's it called? The PlayStation game. So I think that was FIFA 03 and either FIFA Street, the first one. I remember hearing uh, one of those few records. But again, it's Gram. It wasn't as big. So I, I unfortunately didn't get to experience that. But, but that's for you to fill in. So yeah, what about you? What, what were you for the buzz for two albums since you were here? This is sort of a techie question for me because even though, yes, Born to Do It was felt harder on a wider scale. Yeah. I think like, obviously, on the underground scene, which I was properly plugged into, yeah, like the buzz for, for, for Dizzy and Boy in the Corner was a mad thing because obviously Dizzy had done, because Dizzy was originally Roll Deep. Yeah, so, okay, okay. Which obviously is, is, is a crew that was made up of Wiley and some some legendary um, gram artists. I think was Skepta in Roll Deep as well. Um, possibly. Possibly, yeah, I, th- I think so. But yeah, like he was in Roll Deep. Um, oh, he was part of, 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 of Roll Deep and also he was part of the Heartless crew as well. So those are, are two of the grime sort of, um, the grime sort of groups, yeah, that were making like a lot of buzz back in the day. Like I said, I was plugged into that scene. So and a lot, a lot, a lot of my friends were too. Do you get what I mean? And obviously, that sort of music, Graham hadn't travelled into the mainstream yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was yeah, very yeah. Much an underground thing. Yeah, it was very much an underground thing. So, I mean, if you wasn't plugged into the underground like I was, then you definitely wouldn't have felt the buzzer boy in the corner. You would have just heard like, because I think the first single off of this album was "Fix Up Look Sharp." No, I can see here's actually "I Love You." Oh, is I love then you. Fix okay. up, then Fix Up Look Sharp came out okay. in they August. Yeah. yeah. So obviously when I love you, I love you. I think I love you did de- decent on the on, on, on the charts. It was like it was like the first one of the first grime grime songs to actually, you know, do well on the charts. You understand? Or do respectable on the charts. And um and then obviously Dizzy followed that up with Fix Up Look Sharp, which was his breakthrough hit. You know what I'm That's what that that track is what really traveled, you know what I mean, through through the mainstream. Um but like I said, if you weren't plugged into the underground scene, if you weren't plugged into the ground scene, which was very much still bubbling or just on the verge of like, you know, just going boom, then you wouldn't have really felt Dizzy's, you know, Dizzy's impact or Dizzy's buzz when he came out with Boy in the Corner. But obviously with Craig David, I mean, even your your auntie, your mum, you know what I mean? Yeah, 100%. Because Seven Days was on heavy rotation on the radio, on the radio stations in the UK. You understand? Mm-hmm. Heavy rotation. Feel me? And even obviously... Let's even flip it back. The stuff that he did with Arthur Dodger. Yeah, 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 yeah. The singles on Arthur Dodger's the the debut album, album as well. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, Rewind, you know, that was one of yeah, the Yeah, that was Big Boy Big Boy Yeah, but obviously before that, he had done some stuff with Arthur Dodger, which was a, which, which, which was an absolute smash. Mm. And Arthur Dodger was very big in back back in those days. You get it? So, yeah, true, 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 true. Craig David, that's what I'm saying. That like Craig David, yeah, was already like people were waiting because obviously. Like they heard him on 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 some of the tracks on Alpha Dodger and just they were like, oh, shit, who is this guy, Craig David? You know what I'm saying? He sounds immaculate. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And then obviously he followed that up with with seven days. And then boom, like he was absolutely gone. And then walking away, you know, it was just hit after hit after hit. Uh-huh. So yeah. I mean, for this one, I, I can say that. Yeah, Born to Do It had the bigger buzz. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. on a grander scale. But Trust me, don't get it twisted. The buzz for Dizzy in the underground sort of remit was 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 massive. You know what? Sorry, go on, go on. It was basically like um before, not even to, to try and compare, but before fifty, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> when they released the was the after they got shot, and then he was yeah, 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 yeah. And just before his debut album, the 50, the the buzz for fifty was crazy. But if you weren't plugged into the underground hip hop scene, you wouldn't have clocked it. You understand? You yeah, yeah, yeah. Until, until until the lights, yeah, 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 yeah. until when the club boom. came out. You understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the buzz for fifty before in the club was released was massive. So yeah. it wasn't on that on that scale, but. Just to give you like some context, you understand that like, Dizzy was bubbling. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Dizzy was yeah. bubbling because like I said, in, in Roll Deep, in, in the Heartless crew, Dizzy was one of the and obviously Dizzy used to clash all the time, innit? You mm-hmm. understand? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've heard some of the clashes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He used to clash with other MCs all the time. So people knew that Dizzy was cold. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? People knew that Dizzy was cold and people knew that he was special. 
you know what I'm saying? Like an underground, you know what I mean? Yeah. So like I said, I think what goes against Dizzy in this regard is the fact that Graham just, just wasn't mainstream yet. That's what I was going to say. I think on a popularity scale, both our, and also Craig, Craig David would win. But mm. on a just based on a hype and in terms of how popular, how how much they can maximize that hype, I think both of them did exactly the same level. Do you get me? Mm. Like people were as people pe- for people who listened to Grime, they were as amped up for Boy in the Corner, and for people that were listening to Two Step and Garage at that time, they were so amped up to listen to that particular album as well. So I can't lie; I think it'll be it's fair to give it even. Do you get me? I mean, mm. what makes it what makes it different than just popularity? But if we remove popularity out of it, I think they both had the same amount amount of hype from what from the from what you're saying as each other, really. So yeah, yeah, facts, facts, yeah, definitely. So yeah, okay, let, let's let's move on to the Sonics now. Yeah. Um, so like like we mentioned before, both of these albums are are, are different in terms of obviously one's predominantly R and B garage, yeah. and then the other is strictly grime. Like hardcore grime, so I mean, like just in terms of the Sonics, bro. Like how, not how do they differ from one another, but how would you go about explaining, you know, um, the differences and the similarities between these two albums, if there are any? Uh, sorry, what the dissimilarities? Yeah. So how how would you go about explaining the differences or similarities between? Both okay. Albums, so in terms, I mean. Of- in terms of the difference, obviously the differences are quite huge, even though they mm. both draw from the same pool. So mm. uh, Born to Do It does draw on from the pool of Two Step Garage, and that's also what Boy in the Corner does. But the way, and also, yeah, the, but the way the Boy in the Corner is more executed is more like a rapping sense, much faster, essentially what Graham is. Uh, while with uh, Boy, uh, not sorry, Born to Do It, slows it down make it more danceable as well so it's it's it basically um keeps the essence of two-step garage and dance music while boy in the corner completely just speeds up that entire process and also other different elements i believe like sort of drum and bass to make it essentially grime so same pool different results and from there we also get different lyrics so mm-hmm. Boy in the Corner is extremely mm-hmm. aggressive. It's about yeah. this adolescent young man that's growing yeah. up. Was it mm-hmm. where did he grow up? Was this like somewhere Bo East it's London, fun. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bo East it's London. Fun. Literally the menacing boy in the corner that is going to jack your phone. Like mm-hmm. grabbings and jackings were so big during that period of time, and it still has persisted, unfortunately. And mm-hmm. Dizzy Ross was boy in the corner perfectly personifies that individual. And we, as we go through some of the records, the lyrics are literally about <laughs> causing madness, but also really about like, you know, depression and being suicidal. I think in terms of the last record as well. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, we'll yeah. fill me in. We've got the, you know, two-step lover boy, uh, you know, uh, what's it called? Um, falling in love. And mm-hmm. um, also about youth as well, kind of like by like sneaking into like the, you know your sneaking into your girl's house while the parents are like sleeping, you know, uh, making yeah, sure you yeah, don't yeah, get yeah, caught. Yeah. Do you get me? And um, also really k- kind of heartful records like I'm I'm walking away, you know, you know about life's toughness and life ills as well. So I will say one is more brighter, but the other one it's much much darker and much much more grimier. So. Yeah. Those are some of the dissimilarity and similarities we have between those two albums. So yeah, I, mean, I totally agree, bro. I feel like yeah, one's very much a a, a <laughs> <laughs> uh, bro. Like one's very much like a it just has a dark tone to it. Yeah, like he's gonna punch you in the face. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you just wanna, you know what I mean? Whereas the other one is more, is, is, is a lot more softer, a lot more. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, a lot more upbeat, and and you need to understand though, obviously where Dizzy grew up. Obviously, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, man. It was it was rough. It was. Oh, rough. it was risky <laughs> roles. <laughs> it was risky. Yeah, roles. survival. Yeah, yeah. It was survival every single day. Do you yeah, know what I'm like? Right. If, if you woke up, if you were blessed enough to wake up to see the next day, mm. then you know what I mean? You're, you're, you're on your knees thanking God because, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> because, bro, like, yeah, it was this, it was this everyday pressure, pressure, yeah. pressure, pressure. Whereas obviously, you know, with Craig David, you know, he didn't really grow up in that type of environment. You understand? Yeah. Um, he grew up in a, in a, in a, 
with obviously both parents, you know. Yeah, and he, got, he grew up in Southampton, didn't he? He grew yeah, up in yeah, a nice yeah, section yeah, 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 yeah. Uh-huh. Which is very, very different to, to, to obviously, E3 Bowl. You understand? Yeah. Um, it's, it's very different. It's a lot more peaceful. You understand? You don't get the madness that Dizzy was. <laughs> back in those days. So you can tell. Because obviously both of them were very young when they released those albums. I mean, D- um, Dizzy was like 16. I think 16, yeah. 17. And Craig was yeah. probably in his early 20s or something. Yeah, yeah, I think it was 19. I think reading yeah, yeah, reading, yeah, yeah. It, reading it here is 19, yeah. It's 19, exactly. So both of them were, were fairly young. You yeah. know what I mean? So obviously, you know, like, it, it just shows, in it? Like, the difference, the differences in terms of how they were brought up, you understand, and, and the experiences they had in their childhood. Um, and, and, and like we've, we've said so many times, obviously, one is, 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 is predominantly grime. You know what I'm saying, and the other is is R and B, uh, dubstep, garage. You feel me? So, um, yeah, obviously they 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 have a lot of differences, um, but they also have like a couple of similarities as well. I think, mm-hmm. you know, just the fact that both of those both of these albums are very, you know, they're very sort of um, relatable. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, 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 100%. Even with DC, even though you don't, like with DC, yeah, like you, you, you don't have to have grown up in, in, in where he grew up to, to, to sort of relate to him in, 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 in a sense of, you know, when he's talking about, because he talks about depression a lot, you understand? And not yeah, really yeah, yeah, You don't have to, to, to have been brought up in, 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 a, in, a, in, in a, in a, um, sticky neighborhood to, to obviously, obviously experience that type of emotion. Do you get yeah. what I mean? So it's like, both of these albums are talking about real shit. Obviously, Craig Davis, you know, he talks about love, you know, in 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 some of the records. He yeah. also talks about, you know, not being able to cope with life. You know, yeah. wanting to walk away from 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 life. You understand? Yeah. Which Disney touches on a lot in in hey, on the record. Do it, yeah. do it. I think the last record that's the name of it. And I think there's it. another record as well. Sitting here, he talks about the first record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sitting here. So it's like, yeah, like both of these albums are are, are relatable in that sense. You get what I mean? Like they, 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 they open up about real life. You know what I'm saying? Real I, life. Yeah, real I would. Life. I, I, I 100. I don't, and I also add on to it and to say that they're like a different side of the coin of the adolescent story. Yes. Yeah, they do yeah. cross path. You get me? Yeah. Like being do. young, you know, being young from like what's it called, late teenage years mm. to late to early young adult adulthood years, but they all mm. tell a different side of that story. Almost a different different side of that like British story. Do you get me? on growing up during that period of time, yeah, and right, right. these albums are so much of a, like they're like an artifact of that period of time. And I just look at yeah, those albums. Like I look diary, at, isn't it? Yeah, That's I just look, yeah, hundred percent. And 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 I'm so happy. I'm the one thing that I'm most happy about those albums is that they pulled from the environment. Like Craig David could have easily just gone full blown R and B. And I don't yeah. think that one would have done well. There would have been record on it, but I don't think it would have had as much of a um, had as much of an impact as Born to Do It has had, and also continuously knocking at the door. Because with Born to Do It, you could argue that there's 100% many albums that are better than Born to Do It. I, I, that's 100% true. But what makes Born to Do It special for me, it's that British uh, story. And that's and and we're way in the corner. It is the British story, 100%, man. And also the way it's executed, produced, which we were getting to. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, facts, 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 facts. And also, like I said, just to... Just to quickly make one one more point on Born to Do It. Yeah. I mean, we hadn't really seen at that point, we hadn't really seen a male UK R and B artist do what Craig David was doing. Oh yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. 100 yeah. percent That's true. That's true. Hold on. You know, we hadn't, bro. At that point, at that period of time. You know what I mean? At that Yeah, yeah. No, I think I think you're right. I think actually you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we hadn't. We hadn't. Obviously, the R and B music that was popping back in those it's like days, Soul like, to Soul, yeah. isn't it? Soul to Soul did quite all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm just talking about Mel. Yeah, yeah, Mel, Mel, Mel. Mel, Mel yeah, they yeah. Hadn't had one. Obviously, in America, they had, they had, they had, they had. They had yeah, they had, they had a whole they had bag, a cool had, Yeah, 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 yeah. Like Usher was laughing. Usher was Usher really was laughing. laughing. <laughs> Justin, yeah, Justin Timberlake, obviously. You know, yeah, he came. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Around that period, obviously, that, Joel. that was. Yeah, yeah, Joel, like Donald Jones, like they had. There was, there was a lot. There was a lot, but we hadn't really had that in the UK. So mm-hmm. I think obviously Craig, I think that's what also helped Craig as well, that he was one of one, really. Yeah. I mean, he wasn't, yeah, we hadn't really seen that. So yeah. And um he even, like I said, he even he even managed to break through in America, which this goes, I would say, yeah. I mean, that yeah, is that alone is a miracle in itself, bro. That is a miracle yeah. in itself, you know, because since then, 
I mean, what UK male R&B artist has, has, has broke through in America like that? Since then. It was, very what's man, his name? Very man, very Jay man, Sean. Bro. Jay Sean did like two, three records, but not as consistent yeah, but as yeah, yeah. David. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, not, not like crazy music, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, and I wouldn't even classify Jason as a pure R&B artist anyway. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he had that record, which was, which is the, like, the heartbreak record, which kind of did very well, was it? Yeah. Over here, and then I think it did well. No, 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 Down Down was what killed, down, was down. killed it in uh, America. Yeah, 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 so yeah. So, I mean, again, okay, so um, what were your sort of standout records from, from both of these albums? Uh... Standouts. Um, it's it's interesting because with the way these two albums are sort of like sequenced and they're sort of are done, um, it makes it for like a completely sort of different experience. Um, which for me gave with sort of you know different albums that I sort of end up liking and not liking. I remember first listening to like Born to Do is like individual record and. You know, records like Feel Me and Rendezvous, Seven Days. Um, I think Last Night was good. Walking Away, Booty Man, You Know What, and Rewind were some of the records. Until this day, the records that very much stand stand out. And the listening experience for it, for the uh, Born to Do record, is very much kind of a bit spotty, spotty a little bit. Like, I don't like Kevin messing around. I find that completely... Yeah, that's what in a way. Like. Uh, Follow Me is not bad. That's the very much like a R&B record. Follow Me. And I find yeah. I mean, nah, nah. that's a very much like an R&B record, but I, I, I'm not quite, it hasn't, it never grabbed onto me. And I, obviously that's a record that loads of R&B artists were kind of making at that period of time. And then once in a lifetime, it's like there's sort of li the little heartbreak ballad. And those records, I don't really care for them. Like I absolutely, to this very day, Follow Me is not bad, but the other two, I, I could throw them away. I don't really like them. But those records that I mentioned are those records that completely continuously stand out for me. And for me, it's always, I think that for me, the best record on the album that I've had to pick has to be Rendezvous. Rendezvous, uh, Rendezvous, Rendezvous has, before that, I went through that period of time where I was questioning the album, Rendezvous has always been the one record that's always continuously sort of stand out. And also it, it's a phenomenon, it's a beautiful sort of like love song fam that, that I remember me you having this conversation of which uh was it called um record um uh, which like what 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 was one of the top R and B records and I we both flat out probably agree that Rendezvous is in there like one of the best R and B records in of the all list time. bro of all time of all time it's in the list bro so yeah so I think I think oh wait, that's obviously that is on the Born to Do it section with the Boy in the Corner section it was very interesting I remember listening to Boy in the Corner for me first started listening to it it's such a hard album to get into because it's yeah so, facts, facts it's, it's such so, a, like, it's like it's bro. all like at, at first when you listen to it yeah it's like especially even like the, the, the instrumentals like, <laughs> like, like, it's, like it's, it's like all over the place you understand yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, it's, like, it's very just like it's just disjointed, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, mess. Do you get what yeah. I'm saying? And obviously, the younger me, yeah, obviously, just to, I'll, I'll let you yeah, no, 100%. Go on, go on, go on. It's all yeah. relevant, it's all relevant. The younger me was just like, What the like, what yeah, the, like, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the same thing. I was what, this, bro? Like, what the, this is a mess, bro. Like, you understand? Yeah. Like, it doesn't even sound like finish, you yeah. know what I'm saying? It doesn't even like it, just sounds like, like. It sounds like so someone just put this mash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just plug <laughs> it. Yeah, yeah. in yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. like It sounds like this. Somebody was just playing around. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? It just, it, it, it just. It's so hard to to get into at first, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially obviously the younger me, innit? But then, when you over time, obviously when you're listening, it matures, and when you get older, yeah, you realize how much of a like how much of yeah the production is fucking like records like live oh gee my god man or like or like or like oh, what's it called seems to be seems to be is phenomenal as well man and mm -hmm. i don't see your point i don't see your point the production is so idiosyncratic fam like it's so, yeah, it's so erratic it's, it's erratic, yeah bro. like like even though even though it's a grime album the production is very much dizzy rascal production do you get me mm. so it's not I would argue that it's not conventional gram that you would have got back then. Like it's still very much Dizzy Rascal. So that that I remember listening to the album and I did, and for many for for a long period of time I found it very difficult to get into the album and I didn't have the same context that you had growing up in the UK to understand the culture behind it. 
So when I'm hearing some of the rec- rhythms of record, and I'm like, yo, like you're saying, it sounds a little bit erratic, sounds a little bit disjointed. But when I've managed to sort of, what, the longer I've lived in the UK and understood much, much the more the urban scene, and then um, listen to the album fully, that's when I understood the brilliance of Boy in the Corner and understood the brilliance of his productions, more importantly. Like, yes, it's so idiosyncratic, but some of the production is so sparse, it's so minimal, and everything just snaps, do you get me? Like, everything snaps, and his lyricism, oh my God. His wordplay is mad, it's mad. Wordplay, and, what, and his storytelling, even, even a record, I think what he said it seems to be, I think there's a, there's a, there's a record on, I can't remember when he's talking about like, um, about love, where there, there's no love around here, fam. I can't remember which record that, that, yeah, that I think name I think it's cut, um, cut, cut him off or something. Yeah, I think he's cut, the, I think he's cut, no, round we go. Round, 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 round we go. Round, round, if you love it, let me know. And he's talking, he's talking about like, and he's talking about adolescent sort of like love story about this girl um, who really doesn't. No, he's talking about the guy who loves the girl that, the, but, but the girl doesn't love the guy. Like, they, like the girl keeps on playing the guy. Like yeah, his storytelling yeah, yeah. is so brilliant, and and that record I think is uh, "Round We Go." Uh, I love you. Obviously, fix up, look sharp. Cause fix up, look sharp got a lot of loads of these like big beat rock drum records. So that's that's what made it more easy to listen to. Uh, mm. So I think I love you. See, fix up, look sharp. And round two, we round we go. Especially round we go. We're like my we're like my favorite record. But the more I've, especially now having to listen to the album, so we can you know do this video. I, I there's more record that I even like. Even records like Brand New Day and also Live All. Live All is. Mm. So cold, oh, absolutely oh, incredible. And I think my only issue that I have with Boy, uh, Boy in the Corner uh, is that some of the records are quite similar to other records. So he could have removed some of the records because they all talk about, you know, the same sort of topic with him. He could have literally removed them. But other than that, um, I think the album is outstanding and his production is brilliant, man. Like he's, and I think he also worked with some people, but I think he did most of the production. And for him to do that at such an age, it's it's amazing. What about you? Obviously for me, bro, like just in terms of, let me let me talk about Born To Do real quick. I think with that album, yeah, similar to you, Rendezvous is by far my favorite. Well, yeah, yeah, 100%. Like, special. Like if I had to compile, yeah, my list, yeah, of, of the 100 greatest songs, yeah, that I've ever heard in it. Yeah. Born to do it is not only does not only does Born to do it make it in the top 100, but I think it will be in the top 50. No, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just that epic, man. Like it's it's yeah, it's 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 one of my favorite songs of all time. Period. You know what I mean? Like like that that track. Like I play it religiously. You know what I mean? Like I play yeah. it like these are one of the songs. Yeah, that you know it doesn't matter if it was if it was released 20 years ago. I still play it like on a regular basis. You get what I mean? On a regular basis, even to this very day. The, the, the song is phenomenal. And obviously you've got like Fill Me In, which is a banger. Yeah, 100%. Um, and I think, do you know what it is? What's, what's so great about um, some of the, the songs in this album, like obviously some of the, the, the known songs, like Seven Days, mm-hmm. Fill Me In, Walking Away, Rewind. Bro, I must have heard these songs like a million times. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Like a million times. I've heard it on the radio a million times. I've heard it in clubs a million times. Bro, it's like, I can't get, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, again, was even with Seven Days, bro, I play it, even though I hear it all the time. I play it like I just heard it yesterday and it still sounds like, it still sounds amazing. Like, you know how certain, after a while, certain songs just sound, you know what I mean? Yeah, they start to just lose their, uh, what's it called? Yeah, um, the Genesis Choir, you understand? yeah, yeah. yeah. But bro, these are these are classic songs. When I when I when I when I refer to songs as classics, yeah, this is what I mean, in it. Hundred percent are not like they don't have no expiration date to them. You know what I mean? And the, and he has like four blood on one album. Yeah, some artists don't even have one. Yeah, you know, again, but this nigga has four. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? On Fact. one album, which is which is you know like and also for the the other other songs in the album, I mean. I hear what you're saying about, I think there's only two songs that I really didn't like, which yeah. is one of the ones you mentioned already. I mean, Once in a Lifetime. Yeah. Once in a Lifetime, I can't be messing around. Like, right? yeah, 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 I just, <laughs> wait, hold on. It's, it's dun, dun, dun. 
Dun, dun, yeah, dun, 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 is that, dun, is that dun, Kevin Messing around? That is Kevin Messing around, isn't it? Yeah, God, can't be messing around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that can't lie. That needs to go. That needs to go. That needs to go. That needs to go, bro. <laughs> that song is like, no, nah, it's not. <laughs> no, that's not it, Craig. That's not it, bro. No, nah, it's not it, Craig. And then I think there's one other track. I think it maybe is Once in a Lifetime or something. I think, I think. But yeah, there was only like two tracks I didn't really like. Like the rest, I hear what you're saying about, um, I think you mentioned. um. Uh, follow me, follow me, yeah, yeah, yeah. About follow me, yeah, I hear what you're saying. But, I, you know, I, but, but I think that track's good, innit? Like, I, I like it, I did it to my playlist. But I definitely hear your 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 criticisms on that song. Um, follow me, follow, yeah, follow me, yeah. follow me was, follow me was, was your booty, man. Remember how I loved booty, man? Yeah, 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 yeah. But you didn't like booty, man. And yeah, that's what but follow no, me. I love booty, man. But now I actually like yeah. booty, man. You understand? Like, booty before, man's a big follow, song. I didn't like booty, man. I thought, yeah. Booty man's, actually, booty man's a big sport song. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, boom. and then yeah, just the overall. Obviously, this this album is a lot more easy to listen to than than. Of course, than, uh, <laughs> of course. <laughs> than, than, than <laughs> it's a lot more easy on the ear. Do you get what I mean? And, yeah. and obviously, you know, king of R and B. You know, like <laughs> yeah, uh, R and B is always a spin. Yeah, from birth. So it's like, yeah, like obviously, initially when both of these albums came out, I gravitated towards this one more, just in terms of the listening experience. Do you get what yeah. I mean? Even though I was a fan of Dizzy and what he was doing in Graham, like obviously I was a Graham fan, but like, yeah, some of the instrumentals on 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 uh, Boy in the Corner, like it, it wasn't easy to listen to at first, in it. But pivot into to, to Boy in the Corner now. I mean, like I said before, at first, you know, I like obviously I love you. That that was. Oh yeah, I, I love you is a banger, hundred percent. I love you. Um, just a just a rascal. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but that was that was that was my tune back in the day, as long with fix up the side. Basically, the records that he released commercially in it, those are mm. those are what were, were were the songs I gravit- gravitated towards at first, in it. But obviously, as the years have gone by, yeah, and I've listened to this tape more and more with my mature listening here, bro. The whole album bangs in it. There's not a song, yeah, I don't like on this album. Do you understand? I've added all the songs on my playlist without felt to get it because obviously. You know, like when when you like when you actually sit down, yeah, and and just proper analyze, yeah, some of the things that Dizzy was saying and some of the beats, some of the choices of beats that he that he was using, you realize that at the eight, tender age of sixteen and seventeen, this nigga was a genius. Yeah, yeah, as an artist, yeah, as a musician, yeah, and a lot, and a lot of these beats, they sound even though they sound all over the place, bro. They're intentional, in it. That one hundred percent, one hundred percent. This is meant to to for, for it to sound like this. Do you get what I mean? He meant for it to sound like this. Do you get? It? And it's you like, know, sorry, go on. Go on. No, no, go. On. No, 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 of, I, yeah, and a lot. So a lot of the instrumentals, I feel like set the set the tone and set and set and set the sort of um, yeah, set the tone and 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 set the sort of um the backdrop to what this guy's talking about. Do you get? It? Like a lot of them are very like heart hitting. Like, like in your face, you know what I'm saying? Like, like this boom, boom, you know what I mean? Like bass all over the place, you know what I mean? Like, bro, it's just and it, it is quite erratic. It's almost, Lumas, it's almost that, that 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 dangerous person that can't like sit still when it's about to like come and like do go. something mad. You get there me? You go. There you go. Like it's it's very like it's very sort of like not in like like it's very much an outsider type of yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. And that's who Dizzy was. And even just bro, even the iconic boy in the corner album cover. 100%, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sitting in the corner, you understand? Isolate. Amazing album cover, amazing. Both yeah, amazing. Both one of the greatest of all time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the greatest uh, album covers of all time, period. In music. 100%, 100%, 100%. Absolutely it's iconic. Just, like, it just goes to show you, like, like him just sitting in the corner with, obviously, the devil horns, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, <laughs> he, didn't, like he didn't make this album to fit in, you know what I'm saying? He did no, not make he... this album to fit in, bro. Like, this album, yeah, was meant to be just out there. You, you know, know what I mean? He 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 he's he's the kid that they would have given an Asbo to. Remember, like how yeah, like, yeah, Asbo, <laughs> you know, Asbo was like huge back in the days, fam. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, he yeah, is the yeah, one that would have been that. Yeah, yeah, with yeah, like yeah. nosing kids with Asbo, it was a huge Asbo yeah, yeah, thing that was yeah, happening yeah. back in the days. That's dizzy. That's dizzy. But he did yeah. bro. He, and the thing what I love about Dizzy is he owned it. One hundred percent. The outsider. Yeah. He knew that he was the the boy in the corner to uh, to speak of, but he owned it. You understand? He owned it. And, and yeah, yeah. It just goes to show you, bro. Like. In, in 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 the and again he produced this album so like this would all of the all of the beats that that you hear on this album 
you know, like they're very intentional. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it was very much done with with that sort of boy in the corner as outcast sort of theme in mind, didn't it? You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And um, yeah, man, I'm just like, you know, okay, I always say it all the time, but for me, your first record needs to set the tone. And yeah. sing, <laughs> sets the tone. Do you understand? I'm just sitting here. Then then like, like, that, like, no, 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 no. Just sitting yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just sitting here. Like, he's letting you know, in it, like this is what you're gonna get from this album. Yeah. So if, like, if, you're, if you're not, you know what I mean? If you're not like, if if you if he's basically saying like this is me in it, and if you don't fuck with me, don't listen to this album in it. You know what I'm saying? I am why I am in it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like he's owning it from the from from the first track. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like this is who I am. You know, this is what I've been experiencing. You know. Like, like he's just saying, you know, from the job, the, the first track literally sets the tone of how the whole album is going to be like. You know what I mean? And, to, and to, I don't, I think, and to, I don't, I think I have to give so much credit because this album, just checking now, it came out on EXO recordings and. So I'll take I, so. Yeah, but I just feel like, had it been other label, I, I, we wouldn't hear this album. Yeah, I don't, yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. I just, like, so this album is so steep, so steep in yeah. British, Brit, like British subculture. If it had been any of the bigger albums, I'm sure it would, it would be no commercial it album. It's very much a label that allows artists to express themselves. You understand? They very, they're very much a label that allows artists to express themselves. Do you know what I mean? That's what I respect about XL. I don't know how they are now, but I know that you know for the majority of the time that they've been in existence, yeah, they've allowed artists, yeah. To express themselves, you know what I'm saying, and it's artists that tend to to not be your quote unquote pop star. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? They're they're the type of artists that are very much like, you know, have been sort of ostracized from the music industry. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. and and don't and don't make as much hits. Do you get yeah, me? They're, 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 they're amazing, not on that yeah, plethora. Yeah. But, yeah, I, yeah. I, but going on to I'm going to about what we're just talking about now. I just. You look at lots of rappers that are releasing to this very day and are and are on a bigger label, like how they sort of end up commercializing their sounds. You get me? And Boy in the Corner doesn't do any of that. I think the biggest commercial commercialization is a record like Fix Up, Look Sharp. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But even then, it still uh, is able to sort of like hold the same sort of punches and grittiness, um, like really, yeah. uh, like the entire album. So. Yeah, man, I, I, but I can't lie. I'm, that's the that's the one thing that I'm most happy about because, fam, it could have easily been different, fam. Easily, Very if he said to anyone else, we wouldn't. I'm, I'm hundred yeah, percent. We wouldn't have that. We wouldn't yeah. have got. He would have had to basically release it himself. Yeah. You know, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's just you know, like I said, this album, bro. This. This it's just very dark, man. It just gives you an insight into like just how, you know, life in London. In, in, in the deprived parts of London was like it was ruining it like and not many people like Dizzy yeah, again unless you're you know you were listening to the underground scene like not many people uh, uh you know um especially on, on on a commercial level was documenting some of the stuff that Dizzy was talking about you understand yeah. like uh, on a wider scale not many not many rappers were doing that on 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 that level and Dizzy was like one of the first ones that was actually doing it on that level you know what I'm saying and um yeah, this I just feel like yeah, this this album man, it it, it it's 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 very it's very it's very open, it's very it's very in your face. Like like a lot of the time, obviously the subject matters, yeah, in regards to this album, are talking about depression, are talking about gang violence, you know what I'm saying, are talking about struggling to survive, you know what I'm saying, talking about, you know, um this essentially being a loner, do you know what I mean? Like <laughs> being a loner, um, and struggling, like not even like on, on 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 a number of songs, um, just like do it, um, what you want, um, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and even yeah, sitting here, he's just talking about, you know, um, being able to to even wake up, not even being able to know if he's gonna wake up to see another day. You yeah, know what I'm saying all police sirens. You know what I'm saying arguments on the block being ended with chefings. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Like, bro, this is some real, real stuff. Do you know what I mean? Which is the complete opposite to Born to Do It. Like Craig Davis not talking about any of that stuff. You know what yeah, I mean? yeah, he's not talking about any of that stuff. But Dizzy, he's, he's giving you the the he's giving you like a live documentation, yeah, of what is really going on. You know what I'm saying in the streets. You know yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Man.